This video is brought to you by Skillshare. More about them later in the video. Most, if not all, structural engineers want to be involved with the design of tall buildings. It can even be early on in their career where they want to move into designing these amazing, beautiful structures. And who wouldn't? When you look at the skyline of places like New York, you see the impressive slender structures that we have available to you. But you also see there's very few of them. But even if we look at the skyline of Melbourne, there's many tall structures around and shaping the skyline is why most of the time we've become engineers. However, the design of these tall structures can be very limiting to your career. And most of the time, the design is really easy. But let's go into a story to explain why the design of tall buildings is holding your career back and it's not something that you should be jumping into, especially early on in your career. My name's Brendan, you're a structural engineer. Now let's get into it. But you may be thinking, what do you mean it's not that complex? Surely look at the designs. Isn't there a lot of complexity in there? Yes, I won't fool you around. There is some complexity in the design of some of these structures, especially when we look at some of the structural systems. But when you're just starting out, are you going to have the ability or even are they going to allow you to design these complex systems? The answer is probably not. They're going to be for their more trusted, more senior engineers to have a look at those more complex systems. So what you'll be left with, you'll be left with the designs of simple columns, doing simple load rundowns or designing the basic slabs, which doesn't really advance your structural knowledge. Unless of course you haven't done that, but it gets old pretty quickly. However, if we look on the other hand, a more simple structure, little systems, it's really where you can see the benefit of designing complex systems. I'll show you some examples that I've worked on in the past that helped me become the engineer that I am now. I worked for a company called Maya Consulting and we designed with an architecture called Architecture Architecture. They won many architectural awards for some of the designs that I was involved with. We can see the complex systems involved. Even being quite small, it means that you need to be very deliberate with the structure that you're adding into it. For example, the turnaround house. We can see it just looks like a simple parapet. It allows you to design that in a simple way that is both cost effective and achieves the goals of the architect. It means that you needed to come up with a unique framing solution that was hidden behind many different spaces. So you don't impact the size and the space of something so small. So despite the architecture getting the award for this and us only being recognized in a footnote per se, does lead me to have great pride in the designs that I was doing, as we can see the simplicity and the beauty of such systems and being able to allow the architect to achieve their goals. I wish we could see engineering awards for these type of systems, but I do see that some of the creativity was required the architect to be involved. So it required a hand in hand between the architect and the engineer to make such beautiful systems work. When you're moving on to these, you are starting early in your career, it means that you'll have more chances of designing these more complex systems. You will get a lot more repetition as you're designing a lot of different systems over short periods of time. We all know that repetition is the way to get better at anything that we're doing. The more repetitions we have, the better and more efficient we'll be at whatever we're trying to design. Where in a big structure, you'll just have the same repetitive task, but it will be quite simple. It's not really pushing the boundaries of how you're looking and how structures behave, where loads are going, and how the structural systems work. But when you're doing the smaller ones, you will have that repetition. You'll see lots of different systems and lots of different ways to solve these complex problems. Now, the little systems and big systems behave in a very similar way, just the scale of them becomes different. So just because you're designing something in a small way doesn't mean you can't scale it up to the bigger systems. This allows you to not only take those knowledge from those small systems that you've tried in the past and looked at how it analyzed, but also come up with those unique solutions and apply them to the bigger structural systems. So if you're just starting out trying to progress your career or get better at engineering, it's not to focus on those bigger structures, but to focus on those little structures that allow you to have more repetition it means that you have to be more dedicated about where the structural loads are coming in and how much you're actually spending, making sure that you're not impacting those small spaces. This is why I would say that every structural engineer should not be looking at designing those tall buildings. Yes, maybe once or twice in their career, and they can be very fun. This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare offers a wide variety of high quality content that is ad free and updated on a regular basis. So whether you're trying to be a creative, look at more financial stability or resilience and building a marketing empire, or wanting to become your own boss, they have many different variety of courses. It allows you to direct your career in the way that you want to take it, as we all need to be the CEO of our own career paths. I've been watching the classes from Claire Liu, where she's been going some of the best practices of running remote team, where it's quite complex and very different from the modern day traditional management when you're based in the office. For the first 1000 people to use the link in the below description, we'll get a one month free trial on Skillshare. Hope to check it out and hope that you take control of your own career. Now let's get back to the content. Now, when you 
do get over those loss of repetition of those smaller structures, you can jump into those bigger structures, but the knowledge from them can pass over. Now, it's not to say there is no complex systems in those bigger buildings, especially the structural systems. They can get really complex. For example, such things as outriggers. Now, you can see how you place them. You need to place them at about third points up the building or quarter points to making sure that you've got enough stiffness and transferring them back out to those mega columns. They can be seem quite complex, but they're really simple systems when you break them down in complexity. The outriggers are just acting like a skier skiing down the slope where they've got their arms out as wide as possible to bring back the stiffness in the system to making sure that you're not leaning over as much as you need to. Much like a skier when they plant their pole helps them stabilize from that point. But the loads in it are not that complex. It's just a strut and tie assessment. The load goes up through runway and transfers it back to help stabilize the structural system. Only really a strut and tie assessment. You need to check the node, you need to check the strut, you need to check the bursting actions. Yes, it can seem quite complex, but it's just the detailing of the reinforcement through the system to making sure that heavy reinforcement can go somewhere and it can still get concrete into your design. Another reason why you might want to be looking at those smaller buildings instead of those big ones, some of the most enjoyable projects that I've worked on, especially the projects that I'm most proud of, are those smaller designs. Being able to achieve someone's home that they live in in the most comfortable way, especially in winning architectural awards like I have. Working with architects like that, that are trying to push the boundaries of engineering and push the boundaries of their design to create up with a unique solution that everyone would be amazed to live in. So I have more pride on the smaller structure that I've been working on than the bigger systems. Yes, I like to show off and show some of the bigger systems that I've played with. But the smaller systems lead to a more enjoyable, more engaged system where you get to actually look at the people that are going to utilize it and show the benefit they, they're going to get out of it. The problem we're saying with repetition, knowledge can take a long time to gain. And I've got an amazing video here with over 200 years of experience where engineers provide their advice about why they became an engineer and how you can help progress your career up to the next level. And if you're interested in supporting the channel, it really helps me out and helps produce better content that everyone can have access to. And there's two ways that you can do this. You can either become a YouTube or Patreon member. The quality of my work would not be anywhere near it is without their support. My name's Brendan, and I hope to see you next week and keep learning. Bye.